Every day in our comment section in our YouTube video, people say that Catholics worship statues. And we already made a video showing that Catholics don't worship statues and the purpose of statues in the Catholic Church, which you can see right there. Uh, but the reality is that Catholics don't worship statues, but people still have objections. Some people say, well, if Catholics don't worship statues, then why do they kiss them? And I see Catholics bowing before statues and kneeling before them. Clearly, that is proof positive that Catholics worship statues. But in this video, Video, we're going to be showing that Catholics actually do not worship statues and the acts of kissing, bowing, and kneeling do not necessarily equal worship. It doesn't mean that Catholics are worshiping statues. And we're going to prove this from the Bible because many people have misunderstandings about Catholic devotion and how we operate and how we think and what our beliefs are. So if that's you, or if you want, or a Catholic who wants to understand your faith more and be able to explain it, this is the video for you. Hello everybody, welcome to Catholic Truth, and if you haven't been here before, my name is Brian Mercier, and I'm super excited that you've joined us. I'm the president of Catholic Truth, a nonprofit organization dedicated to teaching and preaching the Catholic truth of Jesus Christ. And we recently hired a few new people, so we're thankful for that. So if you could keep us in your prayers, that would be great, and if you would consider supporting our ministry so we could continue growing, expanding, and reaching people, we would be eternally grateful. Thank you. What non-Catholics don't understand is that the Catholic Church teaches that we are not to worship anyone or anything other than God. That is an official teaching of the Catholic Church that we are only to worship God alone. So the Catholic Church officially condemns worshiping statues or anything or anyone, which would include Mary, the saints, people, or anything on this earth that is not God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So Catholics are not allowed to worship statues, and therefore we do not. And even if a Catholic, let's say in some remote part of the country or remote part of the world who's not as informed as they should be, do worship statues? Well, they're going against God, the Bible, and their own Catholic Church. That doesn't mean the statues are wrong. It just means they need to be more informed. Kind of like the Bible. Many religions, most non-Catholic religions, misuse the Bible. In fact, Jehovah's Witnesses have made their own Bible and changed countless passages in order to prove their preconceived beliefs. Now, should we get rid of all Bibles just because some people misuse it or use them in the wrong way? No. We should just educate and inform those people. People. And so likewise, there's no reason to get rid of statues just because a few people might worship them. Most Catholics worldwide know that statues can't talk, they can't hear you, they can't do anything because they're dead. And in fact, they're made out of plaster and marble and they don't do anything. So we don't pray to them. We don't worship them. We don't bow before them, even though it might look like that from the outside. Oh yeah, then why do you kiss them? And why do you kneel before them? And why do you do all those exterior acts of devotion, you might say? And those are great questions. So you have to understand that the way Catholics see statues are similar to the way Catholics see pictures of our families. You might hold up a picture of your family, and for the Catholic Church, whether you were in the Catholic Church in the past, present, or future, you're part of our family. You're part of the body of Christ. You are part of of the one family worldwide forever. We're always going to be part of the body of Christ. So that means you're our brothers and sisters. And just as we have pictures of our brothers and sisters, we have pictures of our brothers and sisters in heaven too, which are statues of the angels and saints. And in fact, statues came about because they're the gospel of the poor. What most people don't realize is that up until modern history, way past the time of the printing press, up probably up until the 1800s, the majority of this world, 90% of this world could not read. They they were illiterate. And so the Catholic Church used stained glass windows and pictures and statues. They were called gospel of the poor because they presented the Bible and the stories of our faith through pictures. And most people couldn't read, so this is how they knew it. So somebody might take a statue like this and they might automatically know that Jesus died for them. And it, we could tell the story about how Jesus carried the cross for us, for our sins, and how he died for us to set us free and so we could go to heaven. Whereas if you happen to have a statue like this, you tell your children, well, this is clearly a st statue of Jesus who's risen from the dead. You can see he's in a risen pose. This 
symbolizes the blood and the water which came out of his side and right now is coming from his heart because it symbolizes his love for us and he poured out everything for us. And when he rose from the dead, he conquered sin and shattered death and that's all for us. So these statues are merely symbolic representations of the people they represent. We don't pray to them. We don't ask them for things. We don't think that we need to go to God through them. I mean, that would be ridiculous. Uh, that's Hinduism. Hindus believe that. And ancient pagan religions believe that. For us, they're just pictures, like having pictures of your family. They remind you of the people that are not present there with you. And in fact, they call to mind the story of their life. Just like these call to mind the story of Jesus's life, other statues of angels or saints call to mind the stories in the Bible or the stories of their life, and we try to imitate them in following Christ. I remember in college, I had a friend and we were running all over campus looking for him because his father died and we wanted to tell him the news. I mean, frantically, we were searching every door, every building, and I was the one who finally found him in a chapel. And when I saw him, apparently he had already found out the news because he had a picture of his dad, a big picture of his dad, and he was holding it and his head was buried in it and he was kissing it and he was hugging it and he was crying his eyes out because he had found out that his dad's died. And one one might be obnoxious and point to him and say, hey, stop worshiping that picture. Stop kissing it and stop bowing your head to it. I mean, that is idolatry. You need to worship God alone. And of course, that is just ridiculous and silly ignorance. But yet that's the same ignorance that non-Catholics have with Catholics. And he hugged that person to feel close to him because we're humans. We're body and soul. We, we connect to things on a spiritual level and a physical level. And he was connecting to his father on a physical level in that way by hugging hugging the picture by putting his head in the picture, and he felt closer to his father that way, even though he wasn't. The picture means nothing. It was just a symbolic representation of his father. The kiss of the picture was a symbolic gesture out of love for his father. The hugging of the picture was a symbolic act of love for his father who he missed. And that is the exact same way it works in the Catholic Church with statues. When we kiss a statue, if we kiss a statue, it's not worship. I could kiss a statue without even thinking about it. Or I see people in church going by a statue. I see them praying to God, and then they may walk up to a statue of Jesus and reverently kiss the statue as an act of love. I mean, especially uh, statues where Jesus is carrying the cross, or I often see people carry, uh, kissing statues of Jesus on the cross. They'll see his bloody foot, and they'll kiss the foot, the bloody foot of Jesus on the cross, as a symbolic gesture to say, thank you, Lord, for dying for me. As a symbolic gesture to say, Lord, Lord, you did so much to me. Thank you. And it's a, just a, a physical gesture, just as this boy was doing with the picture, has nothing to do with worshiping it, has nothing to do with the fact that the statue is special in any way. It just is a symbolic representation of our love for Jesus because we can't love him in person. We can't kiss him in person. We can't hug him in person right now. And so we make these symbolic gestures to him and to our brothers and sisters in heaven who we also love. Mary, who is in heaven, we love her. She's part of the body of Christ. In fact, sometimes I think our Protestant brothers think it's bad to love her. In fact, you're commanded to love her. You're commanded to love everyone. So we love all of our brothers and sisters in heaven it has nothing to do with worship. We just might give symbolic uh, kisses or uh, gestures that represent uh, affection or the way we think about them or just thoughts about them just the way this boy was doing or just the way I travel sometimes. I'm a Catholic speaker and a retreat leader and I give uh, retreats all over the country and sometimes in other countries and I sometimes miss my wife and if I kiss a picture of her, if I hold a picture of her close to my heart, has nothing to do with the picture itself. It's just symbolic representation. So here's the point. It comes down to this, that idolatry is the choice of worshiping something that is not God or worshiping something in place of God as God. Catholics know 100% that statues aren't God, that Mary's not God, that saints aren't God, that nobody's God except God. And we worship the living God. But yet, we have gestures, symbolic gestures, out of love for them as well. Just like I only love my wife in a married way, but I love other people too as well. And I might make symbolic gestures to her picture. I might hug it, kiss it, but it means nothing to the picture itself. It's really for her. And all of our gestures that we might make in front of a statue of Jesus is actually for Jesus. It has nothing to do with the statue. That's just a symbolic representation. So it really comes down to the intention. It depends on intention. Everything depends on intention. 
2 Corinthians 12, 13 says that we should greet each other with a holy kiss. So all the people who come onto our channel and say, you're kissing statues, you're worshiping them, you're going to hell, repent. It's like, just because you kiss something doesn't mean you're worshiping it. The Bible says to kiss each other, to greet each other with a kiss. So by that same logic, we're worshiping each other every time we just kiss them and make that gesture of love or respect or honor or obedience or whatever else. Or if someone kisses the ground when they get off a plane, they're not worshiping the ground. They're just saying, thank you. I'm so glad I'm off that plane. So there's, it's the intention of the heart. And some people might kiss something in order to worship it, or they might not. It comes down to the intention of the heart. It's the same thing with bowing and kneeling. Many times you might see Catholics kneeling in front of a statue, and they're not kneeling to the statue at all. They're kneeling to the person who the statue represents. They might just be using that as a picture or a representation of that person, but they're not looking at it. They're not thinking about it. They're thinking about the person in heaven. So you might come to church and see me praying before a statue of Jesus. But in my mind, I'm not even thinking about the statue of Jesus. I'm thinking about actual Jesus all around us, everywhere, eternal God, almighty, the living God. That's who I'm praying to. I may have started looking at the picture just to call to mind Jesus and help bring him to mind. But in reality, the, it's just a picture, just as my wife's picture calls to mind her and I might reflect on her after that. But bowing is not necessarily, or kneeling is not necessarily worship. And in fact, it's used in different ways in the Bible. Again, all comes back to intention. In Revelation 22, 8 and 9, the apostle John does fall down and worship an angel, and he's told not to. Whereas Joshua 5, 14, Joshua falls down before an angel and bows his head to the ground in the same way, but he's not reprimanded and he's not called out because he didn't do it in an act of worship. He did it out of reverence and fear and respect and humility. And so it was totally different, which is why he wasn't reprimanded and John was. So two different people with two different intentions. All over the Bible, we see people bowing to each other. Jacob bowing to Esau. Bathsheba bowing her face to the ground before King David and saying, May my Lord King David live forever and ever. And you have King David actually bowing down to Bathsheba as well in 1 Kings 2.19. So all over scripture, you have people bowing as an act of respect and honor and humility and has nothing to do with worship. So the fact that you see someone kissing or bowing and you automatically assume worship when it could be anything, well, that's poo-poo on you. You're rashly judging people without any knowledge. In 2 Kings 4.37, a woman comes and bows before the prophet Elisha. And it, the Bible says this, that she came and fell at his feet, bowing to the ground, and then she took her son and went out. So she bowed her face to the ground before him. Now, he didn't rip her up and say, don't do that, only worship God, because he knew back in the day it was an act of respect. Even in China today, people bow to each other as an act of respect. So just the fact that people bow before something or someone does not mean they're worshiping it. And you can't assume worship without knowing people's intentions. Protestants, and I know Protestants, who kneel before the Bible. They have it up on this altar with candles in each side, and people don't assume that they're worshiping the Bible. They're just treating it with respect. And when they kneel before an open Bible, you see them in their living room kneeling before it. We don't go in and say, hey, stop worshiping that Bible. Stand up and worship the God alone. Put that away. <laughs> of course, we know that they're just doing it as a sign of respect, not for the Bible itself necessarily, but for the person that the Bible represents represents Jesus. They're kneeling in prayer, reading the Bible, and reflecting and meditating on Jesus, on the gospel, but they're kneeling there before the Bible. It has nothing to do with the Bible itself, but who is on the pages of the Bible. So it's the same thing in the Catholic Church with statues. We don't worship them. We don't pray to them. They can't hear us. They can't do anything. They're dead. And the only problem that God ever has with statues is if you worship them. Now, people will say, yeah, but the statues don't actually look like God. They don't look like angels. So therefore, you shouldn't use them because they're false representations. And I would respond by saying, no, they're symbolic representations. They're not supposed to look exactly like the person. Similar to pictures. My family uh, this Christmas received a picture from someone, and someone had given them a, an artist a picture of us, and they took it and drew characters of 
our family. They looked similar to our family, but they really didn't look exactly like us. And I also say that on the Ark of the Covenant, there were two angels. They didn't really look like true angels in heaven. They were just symbolic representations. And so was the same thing in the Catholic Church. Here's the reality. The Catholic Church condemns idolatry in every way. So if a Catholic is worshiping statues, they're wrong. Now, some people might point to these huge mobs in the Philippines or in different countries where people are pinning money uh, to the statues and there's thousands of people walking around with a statue elevated into the sky and say, see, it's worship. Really? See, that's the same ignorant attitude, the same rash judgmentalism that just assumes worship without any knowledge. You've never gone and asked these people if they worship them. You've never gone and asked them if they think this statue is God. You've never gone down there and asked if they're, you know, giving their intentions to this statue or if it's just a representation of the people they respect in heaven. So if they have this huge picture of statue of Jesus and they're pinning money to it, we assume, oh, they're worshiping it. Or maybe it's a donation to the church, and that's how the church collects donations. Or maybe it's an act of uh, giving to the church as a sign of prayer. They're praying to God, and they're giving this little symbolism. You're assuming they're praying to the statue. You're assuming that they're following the statue, they're worshiping the statue, that the statue is going to give them any everything. When, in fact, many of these things, like in Italy, they have these huge parties for, like, let's say, St. Anthony, and they'll carry a St. Anthony statue around, and they'll have a big procession session for it, but has nothing to do with worship at all. It's it's a party, in a sense, for the life that St. Anthony of Padua lived. And people love St. Anthony of Padua. They loved how, they followed, how he followed Jesus. They loved how he served the poor, how he preached the gospel. They loved the life that he lived for Christ. And so they celebrate it. We celebrate the wonderful lives of our brothers and sisters who have gone before us. We don't bury them in the ground. We celebrate them. And we do it in different ways. We're not actually worshiping the statues. We're actually celebrating the life of that person in a grandiose way. And some cultures do that a lot more than others. Some don't feel comfortable with that grandiose exterior sign of devotion, and that's fine. They don't need to. You don't have to have to do anything with statues if you don't want to, but some people prefer to have an exterior uh, form of devotion, where just like my friend was holding that picture close to him, and he connects with his father in heaven more, so some people see statues or pictures or stained glass windows and are able to connect with God more. They're able to pray more, you know, closely and, you know, think about him more often. And so it has nothing to do with worship, it has to do with honor and respect for the people that they represent. We remember their lives and we remember their memory. We hope that this has helped to explain what Catholics believe about statues and some of our exterior beliefs. I can tell you for 100% certainty that I've never thought about worshiping a statue or thought that it could do anything at all. And most Catholics don't. <laughs> Unless you're completely and totally uninformed on what the Catholic Church teaches, no Catholic worships statues. But we'd love to know your thoughts and we'd love to have you put your thoughts down below. And if you could, please like gently kiss this like button and please leave a comment down below and please share it as that helps us to get this video to be more popular so more people see it so the gospel can spread and you can do your part to help spread the gospel. I also want to say thank you to our new patrons. We've had some new patrons sign up. Somebody $50 a month. We've had one for $10 a month. We just had a new person for $10 a month. We have a patron who signed up for $100 a month and so I want to thank these patrons. You are helping us to spread the gospel. You are helping us to get these messages out there and we need so many more patrons, so much more. We're a nonprofit organization, and we can't do it without you. So if you could consider supporting our ministry, you would have a hand in saving souls and changing lives and helping us to change the world for Christ, to keep making many more videos, to keep doing retreats, and to keep getting the gospel out there. Please pray for us. Please pray for our ministry. Please pray for our work. And as always, we are praying for you, especially if you're a patron of ours. We pray for you every single day. God bless you.